You're welcome back. It's time now to visit the press and see what the headlines are this morning. We're going to be looking at headlines uh, that are on Punch, The Guardian, The Vanguard, and The Sun newspaper uh, this morning. Uh, almost all the newspapers carry um, the major headlines, and they are all uh, almost the same because they, it was a very eventful Monday morning, Monday in short, generally, uh, yesterday. We had the P and ID uh, story breaking. We had the, um, the Supreme Court uh, proceedings also being carried and all that. So let's begin with what we can find on the Punch newspaper this morning. And I'll have to wear my glasses for that. Now, on the Punch, the leading headline is Proof All Alleged Forgery Beyond Reasonable Doubt, Supreme Court Tells Atiku. Court reserves judgment on OB, LP's appeal, dismiss APM's case. Atiku insists on CSU evidence, ex-VP's disposition invalid, says Tinubu. Those are the writers on that uh, topic, Tinubu certificate. Now, we also have uh, UK court dismisses $11 billion PNID suit. Nigeria demands damages. Federal government plans $10 billion to stabilize the Naira, eyes NNPCL for Forex. And FEC okays 300 and, or 3.54 billion uh, Naira uh, poverty, dollars rather, poverty, what am I even saying? FEC okays 3.5 billion Naira World Bank loan for PA others. Then we have below... Israel arrests 120 militants, EU backs Gaza aid. Uh, slain Nigerian student, Nidcom probes murder, Nance demands justice. And we also have uh, federal government, IHS plan, 1 billion Naira tech talent communities. Oyan Dam, flood sacks Ogun communities, governor declares emergency. So those were the headlines on the punch. Uh, we'll be looking at them one after the other when our guest for that joins us. On the Guardian newspaper, we have um, host communities kick as proposed PIA review shrinks 3% allocation. The Guardian, that's the leading headline there. And the riders are host communities must fund new portal introduced by NUPRC hire pay lawyers and chartered accountants with at least 10 years experience. Uh, we also have other smaller headlines there. As injunction uh, collapses, elapses rather, Ondo assembly reopens Ayedetiwa's impeachment process. Tinubu targets $1 trillion economy, hopeful of $10 billion inflow to ease FX crisis. PNID, $11 billion award against Nigeria obtained by fraud. Tinubu hails victory. And APC kicks as Supreme Court reserves judgment in Atiku Obi's appeal. Adeyemi loses again as Supreme Court affirms Osman Ododo, APC candidate in Kogi State. Um, Oshun suspends foreign trips for officials. That's uh, news on page four in the Guardian newspaper. From the Guardian, we'll go to the Punch newspaper to see what the Punch has as the headlines on the front page. The Vanguard newspaper leads with the story, Presidential Tussle, Atiku's CSU evidence not admissible. admissible. That's according to Tinubu, APC, and INEC. Then Nigeria wins $11 billion P&ID case in UK court. And then FEC approves $5 billion Naira annual humanitarian poverty alleviation trust fund. We have attack on Tinubu, UK, Northern Elders, disown Gumi. Subsidy removal, exchange rate unification, we've achieved desired objectives, as according to the president, Bola Tinubu. Uh, there are other smaller headlines there, but uh, let's go to the Daily Sun newspaper to um, wrap that up and then 
the, the, the Sun, say Daily Sun newspaper is next. Supreme Court prepares for poll judgment day. That is, reserves ruling in Article B's petition against Tinubu. President insists ex-presidents or ex-vice presidents fresh evidence alien to law. APM drops charges after bashing for filing frivolous appeal. Uh, federal government will achieve one trillion dollars economy target in 2026. Uh, Four trillion dollars in 2035. That is according to President Tinubu, who vows to clear forex backlog. And President applauds as Nigeria wins $11 billion P and ID case. There are so many other uh, smaller headlines in the Daily Sun there. We're being joined by our guest for this, um, this uh, segment of the program, uh, Mr. Chris Kainde Wandu. Uh, he has just joined us this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Wandu. Good morning. Thanks for having me. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. Um, let's begin with the, uh, the, what we have on the Punch newspaper. Most of the uh, newspapers carried almost the same major headlines here. So we are going to begin from prove uh, table certificate, prove alleged forgery beyond reasonable doubt. Supreme Court tells Atiku, and we have writers there uh, that also say what happened. And that is, court reserves judgment on OBLP's appeal, dismisses APM's case, and then Atiku insists on CSU evidence, uh, ex-VP's disposition invalid, says Tinubu. Please, let's get your comments on that. Yes, uh, the Supreme Court yesterday started hearing on the petition filed by P2B of LP um, Atiku Abubakar, as, well as, uh, as well as the candidate of the APM against uh, the election of uh, President Bola well, Tinubu. Um, you know that um, that issue uh, was initially uh, resolved by the tribunal, presidential election uh, petition tribunal, before it moved to the Supreme Court. So this hearing started yesterday, and the lawyers of um, um, all the parties uh, made their submission. And the most important aspect of it is that to determine whether the Supreme Court can now um, take on new uh, evidence, uh, you know, the evidence uh, being presented by um, Atiku Abubaka has to do with the certificate of the president at, um, uh, at Chicago University, as it were. Um, whether the, most people have said, especially most lawyers have said that, that since that was not presented in the initial, uh, at the tribunal, Initially, that um, we cannot bring in the evidence that the vice president, the former vice president, is trying to bring that into play. And um, so the Supreme Court will be going to determine whether that evidence can be accepted as it were. So the fireworks started yesterday, and um, after some time, the Supreme Court have now adjourned to rule on some of those issues. The date have been fixed, and uh, that is what it was. And the APM withdrew his own case. It wasn't like it was struck at APM withdrew and really once the party in the suit have withdrawn his own case, there's nothing the uh, court can do and to strike it out. So that is where it is. And so let us wait for what the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, which is the final court in the land on issues like that. Unlike the, that of the legislative arm, the legislative arm ends at the court of appeal. So if a member of the National Assembly or State House of Assembly, your case will end at the Court of Appeal, but that of the President and the Governor's end up at the Supreme Court, and that is what it is. Uh, so that we know what to expect, uh, without necessarily preempting what is going to be discussed in the courts, uh, we just want to understand, um, the, the defendants, as it were, are saying that presenting new evidence is alien to the legal system. Is that true? It is, no, it is not totally true. That is on, on election petition, yes. Um, that is a bit, you know, as we say in law, there is always an exception to the rule. In other cases, uh, criminal or uh, civil cases, yes, new evidence can be presented. It is like when it comes to the election, that practically you cannot be able to But as I said, you cannot say. Uh, never uh, when it comes to issues like uh, the law. Um, the Supreme Court 
have been known several times to be able to obtain certain judgments. They've also been able to uh, affirm some. So it is now for the Supreme Court to be able to agree that once the Supreme Court makes a pronouncement on that, that is what is going to be from now forever, as it were. And so it is for the Supreme Court, it's not for anybody to say, everybody can manipulate what they feel as lawyers, or oh, it is, it is not. But it is for the Supreme Court. Let us wait and see what the Supreme Court rules on that. Once the Supreme Court rules on that, it becomes what it is, it becomes law. But is it possible, really, to separate a case like this from a criminal case? Because it is an election case, we agree. But if whatever is being discussed is anything to go by, can you honestly just say, because it's an ele election case, you cannot call it a criminal case? That is what I'm still saying the same thing. They are just pushing me. I, I'm not a member of the Supreme Court. I am not a judge in the Supreme Court. No, no, no. It may not even be, it may not even be no. on this issue, but, you know, generally, no. uh, is it no. possible to separate these things let if... Me, let, me tell you, no, let me tell you one thing. In law, we are taught there is a difference between law and morality. We are talking on the ground of morality. Morality is not law. So there are two different things. Uh, well, maybe you are using, you are using the terminology... <laughs> Yeah, isn't the yes. legal terminology well, that I may not understand? Uh, because no, no, let me just say this. Yes. No, just a second. What I'm saying in law, one of the definitions of law, as I was taught, is the law is what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. That is one of the definitions of law. They are the first definition. Of, but one of the definitions is the law is what it is. And that is, if you understand that, then that is it. So what I'm saying in essence is that let us wait. There's, uh, there's immorally, I can say yes. Uh, how come if I have new evidence, we bring it forward? But if the law says that is not what should be, then they, and I'm talking of election petition, I'm not talking of all cases. Yeah, I've been be specific. Well, what they are talking about here is election petition. I've told you that in other cases, criminal or civil, you can always bring new evidence. But the ele election, the, the law guiding election in Nigeria to the largest, according to some, I'm not, not me, according to some lawyers, have said that you cannot and. Let us wait for the Supreme Court to be able to adjudicate on that. What, whatever the rule becomes what it is. After all, it's the same. We had law in the past, and somebody was told that they didn't have a certificate in 2015 or so. A former president didn't have a school cert certificate. And they brought about 14 cents. And they went to the Supreme Court, and a judgment was given uh, on his behalf. We have seen a situation where somebody that did not win an election, governor of, like governor of uh, uh, Imo State, uh, that came forth. And the Supreme Court left the person that won the election, the second, the third, and made it the person that came forth, the governor of Imo State. So, so you cannot just predict what is in the Supreme Court. And so let us just wait and see what they're going to say. Mm. Uh, well, you've, thank you for, for, for clearing that. Because from the layman's point of view, I was just looking at the fact that the law calls these two things uh, the, um, something that is not supposed to be. Uh, let's say you shall not kill, <laughs> according to law. And that is law. When you kill, this is what happens to you. And then something else uh, is being covered by the law that if you do this, you cannot get this. And I was just thinking, what if these things come together, they are intertwined, will it affect the judgment or they will just separate the oil from the vegetables and say, uh, because it is not related, we cannot take it. But you have... Uh, you have, you have, you have uh, um, just quickly, quickly, just quickly, let me say this, this, this. You know, we also talk about election. Yes. I'm sure you heard of pre election matters and yes. post election matters. Yes. It's the same election. When a judge, a, a judge, a, a, a tribunal will say, this matter was pre election. It's not the same election we're talking about. Mm. There's post election. So any matter that's supposed to be pre election, when it brings it to God and it's, and it's supposed to be pre election matter, and the court will say, oh, this was a pre election matter. You're not supposed to bring it here. In as much as it's still part of the, you know that pre-election issues are also part of the election process. Yes. So it's, it's the law. Uh, it's part uh, of the word. You, you, have, you had several times where they said the law is an ask, and that is what it is. Let, let's leave that before we get ourselves myself confused because uh, you probably knows uh, know what you're saying. Um, now we also have um, uh, other headlines the on the point. Sorry? P and ID. P ID. Okay, that's what every newspaper is carrying this morning. P and ID yes. has ruled in our favor. Yes. A lot of people were praying 
that it should go in Nigeria's favor, and it went in Nigeria's favor. Let's get your comments on how you feel. This is a lot of people are all Nigerians. All of us now, including you. <laughs> 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 because um, if, if that had gone against Nigeria, that would have been a serious problem, very, very serious problem, which was a severe situation. Um, it, uh, it, uh, we, we just uh, thank God and uh, those behind us. They, uh, they, we dropped the ball when that case came up initially. The federal government dropped the ball. Probably they thought it was not a serious matter. And uh, we had a, a judgment against Nigeria about, um, what was it, about six billion? Yes, it was six billion. Yes, initially it was six billion dollars yeah. against Nigeria. And um, it now rose to uh, five, uh, 11 uh, billion because of um, the charges, uh, our interests as it were. And but yesterday, good enough, uh, Nigeria was able to put a very spirited effort. And um, contrary to what most people think, it wasn't this government that uh, this uh, judgment, uh, within this judgment, I think since about five months ago, it has been concluded just for the judges to pick up. So kudos to be given to the, uh, to the administration of uh, President uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari, who stood in and um, sent all the necessary uh, legal representatives and representation at the court of the United Kingdom to make to make sure that that judgment does not stand. It has, it would, it have cost Nigeria trillions and trillions of naira. And the way it goes, if a such judgment is given to you, uh, then if it is given, and you are not able to, then your assets and your assets, sorry, your assets across the globe can be seized and sold off. So the they could just continue to sell Nigeria assets in the United States, anywhere they find them, and then to be able to recover that. I, 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 I'm a mm -hmm. chartered arbitrator of the United Kingdom. I don't have this thing. Place. So, but good enough to have confidence. Because if you look at that initial judgment and case, it was brought to, down to a lot of mistrust and fraudulence on the part of um, uh, those involved. And so many Nigerian. Uh, official also involved. Now that the judgment has given, I still believe that there's need for us to look in for the government to be able to look at all those involved and not personally prosecute them in Nigeria. Yeah, that, that was my concern. When I said when I said most Nigerians, I was thinking about that group of people, the people who were yeah. directly involved. They wouldn't yes. be praying because if the judgment yeah. is that it was fraudulent, then these people should yeah. be brought to book. So but I don't know the prayer that, that, that they were having uh, yesterday when the judgment was about to be made, uh, but no, the pro will the they be prosecuted? Also, That's another thing. They also be praying that the judgment should look against Nigeria because it will also add to their own problem, um, of course. So whether the judgment was favorable or unfavorable, the fact remains that if there are some people that were find culpable in that act, there are some people that were find culpable, there are some people that were fraudulent, in signing that agreement, there are some people that took millions and billions of um, kickback on that uh, particular project. Uh, so it is now for the government to now bring the full weight of the law on them as a deterrent. Because the problem with Berlin has in Nigeria is that we don't try to um, prosecute people uh, for actions taken, and that involves other people to do that. We see what happened in, in security. In security. We have so many people that were involved in the killings of Nigeria, Boko Haram, and named them and their sponsors and rest of it. Today, nobody has been prosecuted. And you're talking of bandits. There are so many people that have been arrested for banditry in the north. Nothing has been done to them. Those have been arrested for kidnapping in some part of the country. Nothing has been done to them. So it encourages others. And that is why you see the, this increment in uh, misbehavior by certain individuals. Because at the end of it all, they just be that either they have the money to be able to prosecute the case or that they be left of the group. So I should think that this should be a, a, a stepping board for the government to be able to identify all those involved and prosecute them in Nigeria as a deterrent. So as to show the world our transparency when it comes to the issue of corruption. Um, but uh, I am happy that um, what happened yesterday happened and um, the president has made a comment on it and thank God that for the judgment. I think that is what it is. We pray but that. If you look at it, there are so many other judgments that have been given against Nigeria, but running to about, the last time I checked, about close to about 586 billion um, um, judgments against Nigeria on issues like this. And that was, this one that judgment had already been given, of which Nigeria had, had no issue but to pay. 
Uh, so uh, we should be able to look at um, those involved in some of these things and just bring them to book, shame them, so that it will be a form of deterrence. Uh, you come to realize that some of them will also end up going into politics. Some of them became governor, will become governor. Some of them will become senators. And some of them will become most of the people that we elect have corruption tendencies. But we just look the other way and just um, elect them and then they continue from where they stopped. How many of the governors uh, that are left in the last dispensation are not being prosecuted for the atrocities they committed? What of those are left in 2015 and the rest of them? That is how we rule in Nigeria. Well, God will help us. Now, federal <laughs> government plans $10 billion to stabilize Naira, ICE, and NNPCL for Forex. Uh, let me just tie that to uh, FEC OK's $3.45 billion World Bank loan for PAR and others. So let's hear your comment. To stabilize the same Naira that um, uh, has been given a free market and all that, and now uh, they want $10 billion. Where the $10 billion is going to come from, we do not know. Probably a loan as well. That is what you call um, policies from assaults. And that is what has become the bane of this government since inception, since the Zoom uh, in, uh, on the 29th of May 2023. Um, he said that uh, there's the, the, supposed to be a free fall uh, uh, for, the, for the Naira. Say you have collabed the two uh, uh, windows. And, um, and we've seen what has happened. Ask yourself how much was a dollar when this government took about the 29th of May 2023. Today, the dollar is going to about 1,300 Naira. Never in the history of Nigeria, I would say. And um, there was a time they said that, oh, they're going to be some kind of a, a short measure that NNPC is having some kind of agreement with a certain country, I can't remember now, uh, where we're going to do products for and they were getting about six million or so, or six billion dollars. Nothing has been heard about that. There were, this is coming and the rest of them. And this same government also said that, um, that it will not go on the trajectory of borrowing, borrowing like the former government. And the president said that we, Nigeria cannot continue to pull. That was one of his statements. Now you are going for this. So, but the fact is that we are just, that's what you're about to call that we just leave uh, Lapa Lapa and Chichi. Uh, in my local parlance, in my local language, you leave a rat, you run after a rat when your house is on fire. How do you do that? The issue, we know what the problem is. The problem is that we are not making, we are not exporting enough. We are not uh, exporting enough to be able to end foreign exchange. When we're able to do that, that, then we're going to have, we are only depending on crude oil as our major revenue uh, uh, income. That in itself will not help. We are not looking at other sectors, agriculture, mineral resources, minerals, um, uh, technology, and so many others that we can be able to show up this. And we are just, so dependent on the uh, on our crude oil as our foreign exchange and when we even our own quarter we are not able to make the last time i heard we are losing about four hundred and fifty thousand um uh, yes. barrel of um crude oil every day our quota from opec is about 1.6 or 1.65 we are just rolling between 1.1 1.2 or there about so then we are also not on the issue of importation of petroleum products we seem to be the only country in the world that Produces crude, but if you know how much we are in exchange, we are expanding, we are spending on importation of petroleum products. If we can be able to keep that and make our refineries work, then that's so much foreign exchange we are we are we are spending on petrol, the uh, importation of petroleum products. We add up to what we earn, so we don't need to. Uh, so those are the issues. So those are the fundamentals. Borrowing from whatever just to shove up will not work. Those are fundamental. I'm not an economist, but I know that these are the fundamental. Until you be able to generate enough to export and end, then you are going to have issues, and that is why we are having this life war. Okay, there's this statement on the Vanguard newspaper that I'm interested in that the, uh, the uh, president said: uh, subsidy removal, exchange rate unification. We've achieved desired objectives. I don't know if you know the de desired objectives that came from uh, that. You should tell us the desired objective. I don't know. And if anybody knows, they should explain to us. Which objectives have they achieved? If, just, if the uh, Naira has moved from about 650 or thereabouts when they came in, and it's hovering about, uh, about 1,000 and 
than 200 and 300, which was almost about 80 percent. Uh, we didn't have many period. This they came in in May. We are in October, barely five months or thereabouts. What are we talking about? So I don't know what objective he has made. Um, the same thing with the subsidy regime. And you saw where he has put us, the cost of petroleum, how, what was it when they came and what is it now? Even at that, we've come to be realized. Reset report said that no serious um, impact has been made by the removal of subsidy in terms of earnings by the government. So what are we talking about? Then you also look at issues that, okay, you say you are removing the subsidy of petroleum. Now, the same amount, if you look at the amount being uh, planned uh, for palliatives, it's practically the same thing compared to the cost of those so called subsidies you have removed. And this one will not even make an impact. You're talking about 50 million people out of over 220 million Nigerians and the rest of them. But petroleum product is something that cuts across everybody within, this, uh, within the economy, every Nigerian feels the impact. But you remove that, you say you want to now give palliative to certain. So this is, to me, it's like a government that doesn't have a, a roadmap. It's just what we are just doing is more of a, a trial and error. And until the, the government gets its act properly back, it's, then we we'll continue to go on this trajectory of knowing, knowing what we are doing. And that is where everything is drifting. Look and look, and look at the uh, 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 cost of food stuff. Nigerians are starving to death. Nigerians are starving. We are talking. People are talking about the war in uh, Israel and uh, Hamas and uh, uh, Gaza. The war that Nigerians are facing is even more than that, that of hunger. So many Nigerians go to bed every day now without eating is one single square meal a day. That should be a, a source of concern for our government. Hmm. And then there is this um, uh, headline on the Sun, Daily Sun newspaper. Uh, first of all, fake approved setting up of poverty alleviation trust fund. Uh, that is a headline there. Um, in some other newspapers, we have a, 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 a particular amount of money that is to be voted for that in, in uh, the course of 365 days. Every year, they will be budgeting this money for poverty alleviation and all that. So that's uh, glaring there. Maybe it will start by 2024. Or the one that they purchased in, in the past, what effect was it? All the money, the empower money, and the rest of them that the government shared, uh, the last government shared, what was the impact? All the money that was distributed to so called uh, 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 vulnerable Nigerians, what was the impact? How many people have you seen come out to say that? Yes, they received that. And that we move on, we're going on that again, uh, sharing free money. Such money should be put into proper use. They are talking of money to bring money to, uh, for the power sector. If we can be able to put that in the power sector and effectively monitor the implementation of that and making sure that it was properly used, to me, to benefit more Nigeria. If you are going to put that money in establishing um, companies, um, uh, empowering SMEs to be able to do it will help. If you are going to use that to properly look at our refineries to work, it will impact on Nigerians. But all this uh, uh, charitable uh, this thing that we are turning ourselves into, uh, we are with not dishing out money and the rest of them. There's some more money that you don't even have because we are even borrowing to be able to um, uh, to be able to uh, implement the budget. So I, I don't really. I have always said that all this issue of palliatives uh, giving out of money, it's a total scam. Anybody can challenge me on that. To me, it is a total scam. It's a, an opportunity for government officials to just steal money. You have heard severally that. The large regime should be proved. Nobody is going to do that, if at all, for any reason. The fact is that the government knows what to do. But what we have heard in this part of the world, that unlike other parts of the world, is that we have some set of leaders that are so wicked to, the, to their citizens that we get them elected, give them the opportunity to lead us. But what do they do? They turn around not to deliver on this. And most of these people go abroad. They go there, they enjoy the benefits, they enjoy the amenities. How they cannot come back and replicate that is what is, is troublesome to me. So if you say that is not an act of wickedness, then tell me what it is. Mm. Okay. And the other one that for me is scary is um, what has been said about the fuel. Uh, the, the headlines reads, uh, fuel scarcity may worsen as 86 firms dump petrol import permit over forex crisis. It is. It is what it is. You know, I've said I've said this before, um, and that is what it is. You know that they say we are paying subsidies. If you are paying subsidies, let me just give you a classical example. I've said it that I'm not an economist, so 
the economist can pardon if I make certain inspiration that is not right. But look at it, you said that you will subsidy of petroleum and the prices of um, uh, um, product, um, product. Yes, you also look at it that, so if it's not profitable to the importers, definitely they will not, they won't be able to import because you said that you remove the cap, you remove the subsidy. So the market force is supposed to determine the price of petroleum. That is why it's a removal of subsidy. But you've capped it that when the prices in the international market is going up, the prices of petroleum in Nigeria is not, yeah, is not then there's something wrong. That means somebody is paying subsidy somewhere, and that's the part. Not only in that sector, if you go to the aviation sector, go and see what is happening. An average one-hour flight in Nigeria now is more than 100,000. And I'm sure you are aware of that, my brother. Mm. The, the aviation sector is also something. The manufacturing manufacturing sector is even the worst. The companies, so many manufacturing companies are closing down. Some have moved away from Nigeria. A man on a daily basis have been crying that we cannot control it. So, if if the forests continue to have this serious heat, then those uh, manufacturing companies are having issues. Do you know? Are you aware by about that? Well, I don't know when last week you bought a malaria drug, which is very prevalent. Do you know how much drugs is costing Nigeria now? Mm. Both those imported and also the ones manufactured in Nigeria. The, most Nigerians cannot even afford drugs, buying drugs now. And that is, that is also part of the problem because they also import some of these drugs. And once the, high, the uh, uh, dollar is going up, then the, the Naira against the dollar is going up. Definitely it's going to uh, affect the cost. So even healthcare is nothing to write home about. I know so many pharmaceutical com companies in Nigeria that are folding up currently. Because some of them cannot even import. So this, those that are manufacturing cannot even get the materials, for the materials to be able to. So it is according to That is why I said this government needs to sit down, have a holistic approach to the issue, rather than just this run of the mill. Kind of. what, we are, what we are on is a marathon, not a, a, a sprint. So this short, yes, I know that there's a short term, medium term, and long term projection. Yes, I totally agree. But within the, even the short term, what are we doing to be able to? Because there are so many leakages here and there, and we have to just patch it before we can be. look at also even in, 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 in basic infrastructure. Most Nigerians' roads are unpassable now. If you are going from this from here from Lagos to the to to the south south or the southeast, at the um, 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 Bini bypass, it's a no go area. That leak road. Most Nigerians spend days now there. If you are going from Lagos to Abuja, when you okay. get to the a, a Ondo Ekiti end of the road, that's a serious problem. If you go to, if you are going to Aochi from Benin towards, the, it's the same problem moving to the north. So a lot of infrastructure is so decaying, and the president totally agreed that yes, okay. he have accepted this job we've given him before. We are the one that employed him. He's our, he's assigned to us. He has accepted this job. I think it's high time he roll up his sleeves and just get the job. All right. Okay, thank you so much, Chris, for your time this morning on Of The Press. As usual, it's a pleasure having had you on set. Thank you very much for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Okay, that was Chris Kende Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He was talking to us from Lagos State here. We'll take a very short break and when we'll return. We'll be talking with the president of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Remember, Chris just mentioned... Um, him or the situation now how they are suffering so let's get to hear from him and also find out why it's so difficult for people to patronize made in nigeria goods stay with us <laughs> 